our East Africa Roundup. We have Derek Bartlett who joins us uh, this very good Friday morning. Now let's take a look at the big stories. President of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Felix Shisekedi, and Rwandan Foreign Minister Vincent Biruta. They actually met in Luanda to discuss resolving tensions between the two countries and most importantly to take a look at possibilities of what will happen, especially impact on Africa and Africans. Darren, if you're there, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Let's go straight into it. Let's look at um, the results of this meeting by uh, Felix Shisekedi and, of course, uh, looking at uh, the Rwandan Foreign Minister, Vincent Biruta. Right. Um, uh, the, 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 the Foreign Minister of Rwanda and uh, the President of DRC, uh, Felix Shisekedi, met in Rwanda. And that meeting also had the former President of uh, Kenya, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, and, and also they were joined by the East African uh, Summit president, who is also the president of Burundi, and uh, uh, Everest there. And they were discussing on how they can dis dis escalate the tension between Rwanda and uh, Burundi. However, the leaders in East Africa made a resolution and decided that all armed groups, including the M23, that they have to lay down their arms as of today. Today, so is the deadline that they have to lay down their arms or else they all first, um, you know, they, they're going to be shot at or there's going to be a um, uh, force to see that they, they bring peace uh, to the eastern part of uh, DRC. Uh, so President Kagame himself didn't attend that meeting. We've seen a number of times when this meeting has been called on and he actually sends representatives and um, you know, he doesn't go himself. It's not the first time that the uh, President uh, Lorenko of Angola has tried to bring these two sides together. Even the first time that he met them and they resolved their issues, yes, he was part of it. That time he actually attended. Uh, that was the last time he had a, a, an interface with him. He attended that meeting. And uh, we saw relationships with Rwanda mending. But now that went south again after DRC allegedly um, or accused Rwanda for supporting M23. And um, when that came up, we've seen quite a number of uh, world leaders, including the the U.S. Secretary uh, uh, of, of State for USA, uh, you know, in asking the government of Rwanda and DRC to meet and solve that issue once and for all. And if there's anything that Rwanda is doing to support the M23, that should stop. If it's not there, then Rwanda should join also in the fight uh, to see that they, uh, they, 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 they stop M23 from making more advances. As a matter of fact, even the East African chiefs uh, of, army, of arms, of, of, of different armies in uh, East Africa also uh, uh, had given an ultimatum to the same M23 and told them whatever line or borders that they had made or, um, uh, you know, places that they had now captured, they should leave those and retreat back to their uh, former camps, where or the, the camps that have been in, or they go back to their countries of origin. And and and, and that was, that resolution was made just last week. So we're seeing progress uh, so far. We've not had any tensions uh, since the other day. Uh, but the question is that will they lay their arms today? Will they yes. lay them down? And if they don't, then how is it going to go? I mean, there have been accusations back and forth, just like you said, the U.S. and the U.N. Um, have in some way, some of them have supported these accusations and cross-accusations. I just wanted to quickly ask before I move away from that story, the president of uh, Rwanda was visibly absent. Is there any reason why he wasn't there? Do we have any clear reasons why he wasn't in the meeting? Well, the foreign minister for Rwanda said that he's actually occupied in uh, uh, trying to do other government work and that's the reason that he has always given and we cannot um you know say maybe it doesn't take priority or precedence the foreign minister to him is good enough to represent him in such matters uh, of the country outside uh, rwanda okay so now let's move to kenya kenya banned gmos that's of course genetically modified organisms 10 years ago when president ruto took office the ban was lifted allowing cultivation of crop varieties using developed uh, genetic engineering technology now this has caused discord amongst Kenyan leaders, the gen genetically modified organisms that uh, took place in ten uh, that Kenya banned, I beg your pardon, 10 years ago. Now, President Ruto has lifted this ban and there's been a lot of discord amongst the leaders. And we're asking, Darren, why has this, you know, caused so much trouble and what's the update in this regard? 
Well, 10 years ago, um, Kenya had decided that they are going to ban uh, genetically modified uh, you know, seeds and any other crop that as, as long as it enters in their soil. Uh, they, and they had given a scientific reason that they are destroying the land. The land will not be as fertile as it used to be over time. And uh, they looked like valid reasons and the House, uh, the whole parliament at the time agreed uh, and said that they would place that ban. But today, uh, pre when President Ruto came into uh, power, when you go through his manifesto, he actually had already pledged that he's going to import more fertilizers, give more fertilizers to Kenyans to be able to plant and overcome the, fem uh, the, the, the famine they're going through or even the drought. And one of the things that, you know, Kenyans didn't see coming is that as they allow fertilizers, they will have to allow also seeds that are compatible, uh, that would work hand in hand with the fertilizers and be able to grow in the land that they have today. Now, Kenya is going, first of all, Kenya is going through quite a tough time when it comes to drought. Uh, farmers are not able to harvest as much as they used to do. They are not exporting as much as they used to do. In fact, Kenya has been importing a lot of maize from uh, from Tanzania and Uganda to be able to feed uh, the population that is available today. Now, the idea of the new government is that when they have genetically modified feeds, uh, seeds or crops or, you know, what, whatever plants they are going to have, it's that they will be able to beat the famine by simply you know, planting seeds that are going to grow a little faster, um, uh, and the, the seeds that are going to be able to withstand the famine and the, you know, uh, the, the, the effects of climate change today. Now, that created a lot of mi uh, mixed feelings in people. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the, uh, the, the ministers came out and had a statement that was not welcome uh, by the Kenyans themselves when he said that we have been already eating genetically modified products that we've been importing for a very long time. This, oh, and there are a number of things that have killed Kenyans, uh, and, and this could be just one of them. We believe that statement was not, uh, actually the statement was not taken in, in you know, with, with, with light ears, and people didn't appreciate it. Religious leaders and fellow polit uh, politicians came out and condemned that kind of speech. Now, Ruto is under huge pressure. Uh, to see whether uh, uh, they, they, they want to see whether he's going to go back to his words, because the reasons that they ban the same seeds look to be turned around and ignored and accept them to come. Except that he's just looking at it from a side of we have a situation at hand which is drought, and we need to overcome uh, this drought. Now, there's a lot of debate that into Parliament and and discussing whether they can overturn that ban. Or not, but as of now, the ban is lifted, and uh, they expect a lot of imports to come through the port of Mombasa by this week, which will have seeds, and those seeds will be distributed, and fertilizers will be distributed uh, to the farmers. Thank you so much, Darren Bartlett, for your great insight into what's going on in the eastern part of Africa. We look forward to have you again next week, Friday, and hopefully we would hear great news concerning the M23 rebels and the ceasefire. We hope it happens today. Thank you so much.